Hey everybody, happy Friday and welcome back to the Weekly Fury. I'm Josh. And I'm Sean. And we have another week of topics to talk about, lots to discuss. And we start this week's show off as usual with Thursday Night Football. The Carolina Panthers defeat the Saints 23-20. to the first half by the Panthers was pretty damn dominant, and yeah. the second half, not so much. They almost let the Saints come back. Uh, <laughs> Sean, what do you think about Thursday Night Football? Well, I thought the Carolina Panthers about to do it two weeks in a row and blow a 17-point lead. But, no, um, it was actually pretty exciting at the end. Uh, it wasn't boring that much, even though the score looked pretty dominant. I thought it was still a pretty good game. Um, division rivals, it came down to the wire the, the last time they played earlier in the season. But the one thing I loved about the game is the Color Rush uniforms. Both teams, finally, like most of the Color Rush games we've been watching, only one team's had a badass jersey, right? The other one looked kind of stupid, like Green Bay Packers. They didn't look any different, right? Uh, these actually, these uniforms are pretty badass, dude, for both sides. I liked them. So they look pretty clean. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Why don't the uh, the Panthers run the ball more? Because you see, I have Jonathan Stewart <laughs> as my running back on fantasy, and no. they need to run the damn ball more. They're not they don't run very efficiently. I mean, when Jonathan Stewart came back from his injuries, yeah. I mean, he looked great for two weeks in a row. They were they were feeding the ball, and these last what two weeks, uh, this has been terrible. Like, why aren't they running the ball more? Like, the you fuck? know, that's a that's a really good question. It stuns me when it was like six seven minutes left. And they were throwing the ball? I know. And it's just like they really – are they purposely trying to get teams to come back into these games like they have been doing the whole year? Like run the goddamn ball. I want – I need Johnny Jonathan Stewart to get going. And another big thing that happened in this game, man, Luke Kegley went down. He went down with an injury. He got carted off. Glad you Um, brought that up, dude. That was – that was a – At the moment, we don't know what it is. Uh, Well, they said it was a concussion. It was a concussion? Yeah, that's what they reported, but honestly, you watched the game, oh. right, Josh? I don't think it didn't look like a concussion to me. Like it looked like I thought more, it was going to be something like a leg injury. No, it looked like if you look, it's, the helmet went straight into his chest. Like I thought maybe it was like a cracked rib because it showed him hype. Like he looked like he couldn't breathe. So I thought maybe it was something with his ribs, something in that nature, chest. But well, then after the game, they said it was concussion. So I don't know. Well, I guess it kind of makes sense, the concussion, because they zoomed in on his face as he was being carted off, and he just looked yeah. like he didn't know where the hell he was at. Yeah. So I get, I, uh, that's going to that's gonna suck. I'm not sure. He's probably not going to play next week if he's a, if it's a concussion or if it's anything serious. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look good for uh, Carolina right now. Um, if they lost Keekly, man, that their defense is going to be even worse, which is sad because I didn't think it could get worse. <laughs> and the Saints, uh, they, they, they lost uh, Mark Ingram. I mean – he, uh, he left the game, and Tim Hightower had to uh, carry the load. Ingram um, was actually doing good, too. He was. He was running hard, man. He was running for his yeah. job. And yeah. he's been doing that for, uh, last week, too. He was doing that. And That's what, Did you see how pissed he was when he was leaving, getting taken off the field? Yeah. He did not want to come off the field. Oh, yeah. he knew. He, yeah, because Tim job. Hightower is not doing too bad. Oh. And, um, you know, uh, but the Saints, they, they lose again. And... Saints don't look very good this year. I thought they would be better than they were this year. Brandon mm-hmm. Cooks um, <laughs> been pretty very stagnant on the, in the passing game with uh, Drew Brees and Cooks. Uh, Michael Thomas uh, has probably been so the more good. consistent receiver for the, yeah. the Saints. But uh, I had the, I picked the Panthers to win this game. You I picked, picked the Saints. The Saints. Uh, I did. It could have went either way because they both pretty much suck this year. All right. Teams sucking this year. Panicking. <laughs> there were a lot of teams that people were picking to be Super Bowl contenders this year. There were uh, teams in the first few weeks, like the Minnesota Vikings, that people were like, oh, man, you got to take them serious. Well, we're now going into week 11, and there are some teams out there, some really good teams also, that uh, should probably start hitting that panic button. Which Just teams do you think have more reason to panic and which uh, teams do you think could yeah. turn it around? And I'm talking about, you know, the Packers, I'm talking about the Bengals. Uh, like, the Packers, they fucking suck. Uh, they just look pretty damn bad this year. The Vikings you know, completely fucking fell apart. Uh, Jesus you know, Christ. I could, go about, I could go on and on. Cardinals. Like an hour. Yeah, I can go on Steelers. and on. Steelers. 
an hour about all these teams, right? Uh, it's sad. It Which really team is. has more is more uh, uh, should have more reason to panic? Um, hmm. To me, I think it's yeah. I think it's the Cardinals because yeah. I mean, do they they don't have any real injuries on that team, right? Yeah, honestly, I was about, I literally read my mind, Josh. Cardinals, because just like you said, no injuries, dude. Really think about what's it. What's the re- yeah? What's the reason for sucking this? Right? And they don't they don't have any injuries that I can think of. They're just playing so um, mediocre this year. I, they have all their star players. Carson Palmer was only out what one game? Yeah, and that was it. And you still got David Johnson just feeding the damn ball, and David they just Johnson, can't. Eric Fitzgerald uh, been very their defense, mediocre. The defense is fine. So to me, Cardinals have the most to panic because there's no real yeah. fixated reason as why they have not been doing yeah. that great this year. And I look at it like this, thinking about all those teams, right? That you said, uh, Packers, Vikings, Bengals, uh, Steelers. All those teams can still make the playoffs. You know, even the Vikings that have lost what four straight now, <laughs> they're still top of their division. They're tied with the Detroit Lions. NFC North Packers, sucks. Packers, I think, like one game behind. Bengals one and a half games behind. Steelers one game behind. All these teams are pretty much still in the mix. But I'm looking at the Cardinals. They're they're two games behind, but they're they're not going to catch Seattle, right? And the NFC, there's they're not going to get a wild card to me with, with the way they're playing. No. They're four four and one. Like I don't I don't see it. And it's it's disappointing, man, because Cardinals were one game away from the Super Bowl last year, and now they just. It's kind of I wouldn't put them on the same level as the Panthers, but pretty damn close, you know. And you know, and they have a they have a pretty small window because if Carson Palmer, if he gets hurt or if he doesn't play next year, what are they gonna do? Drew yeah, Stanton they're... sucks. He is ter- he's one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, this guy could barely throw over seven yards. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know what they're gonna do. So I, I Cardinals have the most to panic about. But yeah. uh, uh, of these teams, which one do you think? Which team do you think is still turning around? Can it be the Packers? Can it be the Steelers? The Vikings? Um, I don't think so. I think they're just far gone. They're done. They're they they can't do anything about that offense. Um, Bengals have been a huge disappointment this year defensively. Uh, yeah, I would say it's a tie for me. I'm going to say either the Steelers or Packers because the Steelers have a phenomenal talent. Big Ben's coming back from injury, right? And then on the other side, the Packers, they still have Aaron Rodgers. And and this has happened a, a not too long ago where they were really bad the first half of the season, then they just destroyed the second half. And they still have one of the hottest offenses in the league since, like, week two or three. So yeah. it's not really on the offensive side. It's more the defensive side. Um, but we'll see what happens. I, it's, it's Packers and Steelers, I think, are the only two teams out of this that will still make the playoffs, possibly. I'm going to go Steelers. And, of Big Ben, Tony Brown, Le'Veon Bell, uh, rolling with that. You want to have rolling children. with that trio. All right, so l- let's say the Packers don't get things turned around. All right, yep. They're in, they are they just keep sliding down and they lose more games and they're probably going to lose uh, this week to the Redskins. Their head coach, Mike McCarthy. There's been a lot of talk about him being on the hot seat this year. Um, they were they were terrible last year. Now they did have some injuries last year with uh, you know Jordy Nelson, and then yeah. Lady Lacey decided to eat himself the damn near to death and gain so much fucking weight. And they had no running game. But this yeah. year, Eddie Lacey was you know he was he got into shape going and start of the season. They had Jordy Nelson back, and mm-hmm. they still don't look like a very good team this year. So. Yeah. Mike McCarthy on the hot seat is it real? And if if it yeah. is, okay. It is. So you're saying he really is on the hot seat. Uh, yeah. Packers seem to don't think like if you ask Aaron Rodgers, he says that's ridiculous. But I mean, when you have this talented of a team and you're yeah. going consecutive years playing like this, I think he has to be on the hot seat, despite the fact that he's been there for a long time. Yeah. And uh, so, what do you think happens there, Mike McCarthy? I think. He and what's on going on? It's well that. You know, he is on the hot seat because you have Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, you know, arguably top, one of the best talent-wise. Um, and and if they don't want – the Green Bay Packers don't want to waste away his, his last – his prime because I think he's at the like the – right at the, the edge of his cl- prime where, right before he starts declining. Even though like if people are saying he's declining now, he's not the same quarterback, but – yeah, man, he has no run game, so I'm not going to put that all on him. No, it's hard to win without a run game and a defense that can't stop anybody. But 
you know, I don't put the blame on Mike McCarthy. Um, honestly, I put it more on the, the GM than anything. Um, the GM was. Just, just because it's not, I don't put it on McCarthy, man. It's at the end of the day, they've had a lot of injuries, right? Jordy Nelson last year, um, Eddie Lacy this year, even James Starks. They were had no running backs. When you're having injuries, the teams that do uh, succeed when that comes is like what the Patriots, all these other teams. Why? Why did they succeed when these guys go down? It's because they have depth, and that's on the GM. That's on the GM to make trades to bring in free agents. And that's the one thing Ted Thompson, I think that's his name, does not do. He <laughs> does not do. He do, he tries to build everything through the draft. But he doesn't make trades. He doesn't bring in free agents. And that's where you can build and put depth. And that's exactly what great franchises like the Patriots. I fucking hate the Patriots. But I give them respect because they have depth. No matter if they have one injury, they're still good. Yeah, because they, they know how to they, scout the draft. They know how to get exactly. their guys. They pick guys that fit their scheme. Yep. And I don't put it on Mike McCarthy, but he will get the, the the blame. And I think he'll be gone if they don't turn it around. Yeah, M- Mike McCarthy, I think uh, he's not so much in the hot seat right. Like this year for the mm-hmm. Packers organization. But if this goal continues on to a third year in a row... They're not going to have any choice but to look at, at at the situation and face facts and go. We yeah. might have to let this guy go, despite the fact that Mike McCarthy has been there for so long. He's you know he's won a Super Bowl uh, mm-hmm. with Aaron Rodgers, and but uh, yeah, you know NFL, you know it's a tough business. And, about winning uh, now, Josh. It's about and, winning now. And the only person who seems to really just keep winning is uh, um, you know Bill Belichick. <laughs> Although you know Mike McCarthy. You know he he has had a lot of success. I mean he's taken the, you know the the, uh, the Packers to the playoffs. You know each of the last seven years. Um, yeah. You know only the Patriots have done that. So they're basically kind of like the you know as far as consistency goes, like yeah. the uh, the Patriots of the NFC. But this is two bad years in a row, and you know and if they miss uh, if they miss the playoffs, I mean the Packers missing the playoffs. I mean people are going to get really upset. And uh, so I shocked. think he has one more year. I don't think he's going to get fired this year. Yeah. Um, we'll see. But, okay, so Tony Romo. We've talked about him, it seems like, every single week. Okay, so this time, Tony Romo, this is not about whether he should play over Dak or not. All right, it's good. been I'm established sorry. that Dak wow. is the guy. Tired so Tony Romo and going forward, the future. Where does Tony Romo fit in the NFL next year? Does he stay with the Dallas Cowboys? Does he leave and go play for another team? Because he obviously still wants to really, really play. But is yep. he willing to play for another team? And should the, would the Cowboys you know, let him go? Jerry Jones says there's no way. But if a team out there makes too good of an offer, because there's some teams out there who really, really could use Tony Romo next year. Yeah, Cardinals maybe. Uh, that'd be a great fit. So, I think about them. Hmm. what happens to Tony Romo next year? Where does he land? Man, it, that's tough. It really is. Um, you, like you said, there's a lot of teams out there that could use a quarterback. Um, you know, I kind of, I kind of have like a like a good little six teams that could use quarterbacks. Now, I think only five of them more really actually have get him. But I, I think because the thing is. Dallas Jerry Jones is very loyal, so he's not going to say I'm. We're giving up on Romo. He da da da. Not, he's not going to say that. Jerry Jones loves Tony, and we obviously see that. But there's there's a few teams, man. Um, if he does want to continue playing and and Dak still progresses through the season, then yeah, I don't know if he's willing to take on that backup role. If Jerry Jones is really that stupid to keep a hundred million dollar guy as a backup quarterback, I don't think so. I don't. I don't you can't. I don't want Romo gone. I don't. I love Romo, but you can't do that. It's not smart. You got to put the money better use, like uh, defense and stuff. Now, the teams that I could see getting him is going to be Denver, um, could be 49ers, um, Jets, you know, um, Chicago, your Bears. Chicago Bears. Yeah, they need because they're going to let Jay Cutler go. We already know that. Uh, Minnesota is the one that I have on my list that is a possibility, a surprise one, because. We don't know what Teddy Bridgewater, when he's going to be back, because he had a horrific knee injury. Obviously, you know, their quarterback situation isn't that great right now. So them, and of course Cleveland, they always need a quarterback, but I don't think they're going to get Romo. 
But Minnesota might be the one surprise yeah. on that list to me because, you know, they have Sam Bradford. Yeah, they have Teddy Bridgewater, but Sam Bradford's done after this year, and Teddy, I don't know what he's going to do next year. They said he might not even be able to play next year too. So they might be the team that I wouldn't be shocked that gets him, them, or Denver. Okay. To so. me, Tony Romo next year, I think the Cowboys will do everything they can to keep Tony Romo and, you know, and kind of mm-hmm. like continue to mentor Dak Prescott. But yeah. uh, someone's going to make two, uh, a great offer, and I think that team's going to be the Jets. I think the Jets are going to make some ridiculous offer, offering draft picks out the ass, and the Cowboys are going to be like, we can't say no to this because we still got some holes to plug on the defensive side. And uh, so I think I think it'll be the Jets who make a great offer, and uh, or possibly the Cardinals if you know they've been struggling all year and Carson Palmer. Uh, if this is going to be his last year, uh, I hope maybe not. maybe he goes to the Cardinals. I mean, Tony Romo with Larry Fitzgerald and uh, and that team and what they could possibly uh, do with that that'll be great. So to yeah. me, I think next year Tony Romo is going to be in a Cardinals or Jets uniform. <laughs> um, we don't agree on something. We, usually we have at least one green. Like we usually agree on one portion of our discussion that's kind of surprising i did not think Cardinals. But i think i think uh jerry jones it will i think it'll depend on what's being offered like if the jets offer the yeah. you know the moon <laughs> does he but let's say the Cardinals yeah. offer something pretty good i think mm-hmm. he'll consult with tony romo like yeah like where do you want to go like i'm not going to the jets they're a mess i'm not doing that but <clears throat> Maybe he does playing with Brandon Marshall, Quincy Nunwa, Eric Decker, you know Matt Forte in the backfield. Maybe he likes that, or maybe he goes to the Cardinals because he thinks that's a better fit. No way in hell would Jerry Jones send Tony Romo to the Cleveland Browns if they were to offer everything. <laughs> I don't think Jerry Jones would do that because he's not going to do that to, do that to Tony said, Romo. Cleveland want, would love to get a quarterback like Romo, but there's I don't think they'll ever have a chance because Jerry Jones wouldn't do that. He's not Bill Belichick. He's not going to just send him off. And to no man's land over there. So now that won't happen. Now, moving on to a player who definitely will be on the move next year. I mean, I just don't see how it could be any other scenario. Alshon Jeffrey. Oh, he I has been sus- cry right now. He has been suspended <laughs> for four games for PED use. He is eligible to return week fifteen. But. Mm-mm-mm. Many oh, okay. are many are speculating whether or not Alshon Jeffrey will even yeah. be playing on the field for the Chicago Bears ever again. He's on a franchise tag right now for like fourteen million dollars. Does Alshon Jeffrey? Do you see any scenario in which he returns to the Chicago Bears, or and if and if not, where does he go from here? No, I don't think so. Um, I just think I look at it like this: if I don't think John Fox was was sold on Alshon. And John Fox, of course, every coach wants to kind of bring in their own players. And this was his year. If they wanted to sign him to a long-term contract and pay him big bucks like he wants, they would have done it, hands down. Except they franchise tagged him, and they give him his opportunity, and he's going to want the big bucks. And there's going to be teams out there that will offer it. But I don't think I don't think the, the Chicago Bears will. And um, it's sad, man. I, I'm shocked that Alshon got suspended. It sucks because – you know we have him on fantasy, um, so I want to cry a little bit. But and but there are three teams that I say that would go after him. Three teams. Three teams. Um, Tennessee Titans. They need a big time receiver, and that's going to definitely help out Marcus Mariota. Um, the Eagles. Eagles because they were actually looking for a big time receiver in the trade deadline. They were thinking about going after Torrey Smith. And this will be a good opportunity to give Carson Wentz a good big target over there because they, they've been talking about how their receivers hadn't been performing. They've been dropping a lot of passes. They don't have that big-time, big red zone threat. Um, them and another NFC East guy, the Redskins. Redskins, Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon are both in a contract year. The team didn't even Ooh. offer him a contract extension before the season started. And the Redskins and, love give, handing so, out bad contracts. Exactly. Those are the I could see Philly and Redskins trying to really pursue him and pushing that envelope. I'm praying they don't get him. I don't want to play him twice a year. 
So I'm hoping Tennessee gets him, but honestly, I'm leaning towards the Redskins of getting him. There is no way in hell Alshon Jeffrey is returning to the Chicago Bears. Not even uh, – I mean, here's what happened. Alshon Jeffrey said that what happened was he took a, a supplement to combat uh, information, information that he was having. And uh, John Fox came out and was like – basically said, that's bullshit. You know, uh, these guys get um, – they they get talked to about you know PEDs and all yeah. these things all the time and somebody like Alshon Jeffrey has heard this over four hundred times you know so he knows so basically John Fox you know sold him up the river and was like no I'm not buying that bullshit you know he knows yeah. better and so the Bears and John Fox the head coach are not even behind Alshon Jeffrey he did give a fucking lame excuse. Um, that relationship is done and over with. I, th- I even when uh, week yeah. fifteen comes, uh, I he probably won't even play then. And uh, Alshon Jeffrey next year, um, shit. Uh, I could definitely see him with the Redskins because I mean Deshaun Jackson can't stay oh, healthy. Uh, so they need that big time receiver. I mean, J- uh, yeah, Deshaun Jackson can't stay healthy. You know, Jordan Reed. You know he's got you know questions with his uh, health, so I could see him with the Redskins. I would like to see him with the Tennessee Titans, but I I don't think the Tennessee Titans are going to give him the money that he's probably going to be looking for because yeah, there are smarter franchises than the Redskins are and what the Bears are. Um, so I could see him with the Redskins. Yeah, that's who I think so too. At least we agree on something, Joe. Now that now it's one thing for a player to move from one team to another NFL franchises moving around two different locations uh it's happened before and uh right now we have two teams that are looking to be Just on the move year, um <laughs> the Oakland Raiders and the San Diego Chargers now the Oakland Raiders are pretty much damn near set in stone they're going mm. to Las Vegas San Diego Chargers are still up in the air uh everyone's talking about oh we would like for them to stay in San Diego, just like they did with the Oakland Raiders for the past couple yeah. of years, it's not. I don't think it's not going to happen. Now, mm-hmm. the most likely destination is L.A., Los Angeles, but they already have the Rams, who just moved from St. Louis. Yeah. I don't think the San Diego Chargers should go to Los Angeles. Uh, but what do yeah. you think about the Raiders going to Vegas, and where do you think the Chargers should end up? You know, I, th- there's not much to talk about. You pretty much hit everything on the nail. Um, Vegas. Ra- Raiders are going there. I actually like that move for the Raiders. Um, it's, Is it it's the right huge, move? I'm not sure about right, but business wise, it's it's great because you're moving out of Oakland and you're going to one of the other bigger markets, Vegas. Man, there's so much money there, and which is a little scary for the NFL, right? And they're all that gambling on all that casinos and this and that. Um, so, you know, I think the NFL is a little nervous about that, and that's why they're like, oh, I don't know. But I think they're, it's already done deal. They've already filed for the trademark. Um, the stadium's already pretty much been approved, I think, right? So Pretty close. If Oakland can't produce a stadium for them, I, Oakland's tired of sharing that goddamn stadium. Th- it's you, at half the season, it's a baseball stadium, you know? And they're tired of sharing it. They don't want to share that stadium. So I think they're going to move. Now, the biggest question is the Chargers. That's... I don't know, man. Um, they shouldn't go to L.A. I don't want to see two teams like, in L.A. I think that's where they're going to go, though. Uh, there's no other choice. San Diego wants to go and to a better market. San Diego, and San Diego hasn't approved them that stadium they've been dying for for I don't know how many years. So I think that they're going to L.A. That new st- stadium the Rams are having built looks phenomenal. And it is a big enough market to have two teams. Would they have two teams for baseball, two teams for basketball? But LA's they, not a yeah. football place, though. No, like, but if you're winning, if it you're didn't winning, work out the last football. time the Rams so and Raiders team's were there. Winning, a city. It's a whatever team's winning. And Let's get here. So honestly, I think I think the Chargers. I don't want them to go. I just think that's what they will do. I think the Chargers. You know, 
there's a part of me that wishes they would come to Texas, go to San Antonio. San Antonio has been wanting an NFL franchise for the longest time. And the Saints, when Katrina happened, they were playing in San Antonio for that whole season. And mm-hmm. they had great attendance. And the NFL fans there in San Antonio loved it. And San Antonio is a great, yeah. great city. And they would love an NFL franchise. Now Very that's so Very that's loyal. my little bias there, and and then you know Texas having three teams that would be great. Yeah, but honestly, I think a perfect place for them would be in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma loves football almost as much, almost as much as Texas loves football. They yeah. just live and die with football. But they but they don't have an NFL franchise, and I bet if you yeah. give, I mean, look what the Oklahoma City Thunder fans. We're like, I mean, who would have thought, did you ever think before the Thunder moved to Oklahoma City, no. did you think that that was going to be a basketball town? Like people were going to take to bas- NBA basketball? Hell I, I no. Didn't, didn't. And look, I mean, they're one of the best, one, they're like one of the best fan bases um, in the NBA. They're fun to even watch when you're watching the games. You're like, man, they're really having a great time. Imagine if Oklahoma City got an NFL team. And in Oklahoma City, there's plenty of room. That city is growing. You have casinos there. And if they get an NFL team, they'll build even more casinos. And it'll become like a, a Las Vegas, basically, you know, over there, <laughs> you know, over there in, yeah. in, uh, in Oklahoma. So I think the San Diego Chargers would fit great in Oklahoma City. And that I think uh, they deserve it, the um, Oklahoma City fan base. They, they would love it. They would take to them like nothing. One. I'm actually proud of you, Josh. You did a little homework on that one. Um, No, I agree with you. Oklahoma's (laughs) been dying for an NFL team. It's just I don't think it's a big market, and I don't think San Diego will do it. But it would be awesome um, because OKC has – And Texas. They thrive there. And that fan base, they just want something. When they got a – finally, they got a professional team in basketball, they were like, we're not letting them go. So (laughs) they go to every game. Every game is pretty much almost sold out, man. It's phenomenal. But yeah, I agree with you. Um, that would be awesome to see in Oklahoma, um, but I just don't see it happening. I think it's going to be L.A. and it sucks. It's going to be political bullshit, and they'll go to L.A. and it'll be shitty. Um, okay. All right, so that's that. Week yeah. eleven picks. <laughs> this yeah. week, uh, me and Sean, as you can see, we are different on five games. Starting out Thursday night football, I was right. I was wrong. You were wrong. Panthers won 23-20. Now, let's get to Bengals and Bills. I yeah. got the Bengals winning. Uh, why do you I have the Bills, Bills winning? Man, I don't I, I feel like the Bills um Bengals are going to turn it around. I yeah. Like the Bengals. Who do you want, Josh? They're going streaking. You want the Steelers to turn around or the Bengals? I like all these teams. They're they're they're, they're great teams. I like them. I like I like the Red Rocket. I like AJ Green. Bengals can't stop the run. Then then you have a running quarterback like Tyrod Taylor. They're not going to be able to stop them. They can't stop the run, but Lashawn McCoy can stop himself by getting hurt again. That that could happen. Get hurt. (laughs) Not going to get hurt. So I got the Bengals beating the Bills by at least a touchdown. You're an idiot. And uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Now, Who Dolphins, yeah. Rams. Okay. Dolphins at Rams. Jared Goff playing. First game. The the Dolphins, four-game winning streak. They've been pretty hot under the radar. We, You got Miami. Rainer, you got, you got, oh, you got fucking Miami Dolphins. What? I got – I got – I'm going with the home team. I'm going. I'm going with the Los Angeles Rams. I'm going Jared Goff. He's gonna. He's gonna impress. Number one overall pick. He's gonna win his uh, first game against the Dolphins. Uh, Dol- uh, the Rams are great against the run, so I think they're gonna contain JJ Ajayi. Um, and uh, Jarvis Landry might not even play. So, oh, I'm confused. I'm confused right now, Josh. Because um, didn't you watch Hard Knocks? Yeah. Didn't you even see how terrible Jared Goff was? Yeah. So he plays for the LA Rams. You know that, right? This is uh you know what? This is this year has been full of surprises and I'm a I'm a I'm a gambler and I'm going to go with the Rams and this nope. guy he's going to shock us all. He he did look like shit during the preseason and on hard knocks. He's going to surprise us. I just have my, that feeling. My I'm going to go ahead and make a statement. My guess is that it's going to be by at least 14 points they're going to lose by Rams. 
God, Miami's going to have damn, them, you're wrong. at least touchdowns. <laughs> it don't matter because I'll be right. Uh, shit. Uh, okay. Well, All right. So upsets, upsets of the week. You uh, let's see. Uh, let's yeah. go with uh, let's go with yours first. Let's go okay. with Redskins Packers. I got Packers turning things around against the Redskins this I week. Redskins. Uh-huh. And you got you got you're gonna go ahead and go against your own Cowboys and because the Redskins are pretty that division is the best right now in, in the NFC. I mean, in the, all of the NFL. So yeah, you are you gonna be rooting for the Redskins to lose? I want them to lose. I do. But when I'm making picks, Josh, I have to look at what team I think is going to win. Redskins, I think, are going to put up points. Clay Matthews is still out. Um, I don't think. I don't think they're going to be able to stop Washington. I think so. I think they'll be. I, I, I think they'll be look right. what Tennessee Titans did. Come I on. mean, the Green Bay almost. You know, they put some respectable points up on the on the game against a formidable defense and Titans. And uh, I think trash, uh, trash. I think I think Aaron Rodgers is going to defeat Josh Norman, and uh, Devontae Adams is going to have two touchdowns, and Kristen Michael is going to have himself a good game. So I'm going Packers. Is he going to even be ready to play? He's going to be ready to play. You're Believe crazy. me. Okay, now going up to uh, my upset. You're upset. This dude. is a fucking upset. Stupid. You're stupid. I have the Philadelphia Eagles going to Questfield Stadium or whatever the fuck that place is called that uh, Seahawks uh, play at. Century fuck. Oh, fuck them. Fuck the Seahawks. I hate the fucking Seahawks. Philadelphia Eagles are going to go to Seattle and they're going to defeat the Seahawks. That defense the Philly has is for real. And Seahawks' offensive line is shit. For real. And uh, it's going to be a hell of an upset. I think they're going to okay. upset the Seahawks. I can see where you're coming from. But when I just saw Russell Wilson What's murder Bill Belichick's defense, murder, I don't think Philadelphia has a chance. I think Russell Wilson is getting healthy. Doug Baldwin's coming, showing out. Jimmy Graham and uh, Russell Wilson finally have a good connection. I don't see Philly stopping that, man. I don't. Now, I am shocked that Christine Michael isn't there anymore, but I think they're going to be fine, dude. That team is going to beat them. It's going to be by at least 10 points, and I see Seattle winning. Eagles winning by at least a field goal. Lies. You're here, you're here. Okay, now, um, Texans and Raiders. <laughs> ah, yep. Monday Night Football. This coming up Monday Night Football, Oakland – and Texans and Texans are going to be going to Mexico City to be playing on Monday Night Football at the Azteca Stadium. Now, there have been some NFL games there before, yep. uh, but uh, what do you what do you think about that? Do you think uh, are you looking forward to that? Uh, do you think that's good for the NFL to be playing in Mexico? Uh, yeah. Shit, there's even talks of I mean, because Mexico really Mexico City they've had games there before and they really love the NFL. Way more than uh, uh, London does, and London loves the NFL over there as well. Uh, there's even yeah. talks of the, of Mexico City possibly even getting a team. So, what do you think? Well, I don't think they're going to get a team, but Mexico. I don't. I, I think it's good. Obviously, it's good for business, right? You're expanding the market. You're hitting different markets that typically um, that they don't hit, right? But the thing is, Mexico City isn't like a market that's not really tapped. Like they they do watch football. Uh, they started airing football, I don't remember, back in the 60s or something like that. Um, a lot of Mexico is a lot of Dallas Cowboys fans. We see that all the time. Houston, like, they have teams that they watch on TV out there. So it's it's. I think it's good for the, them out there to be able to witness that. People that can't get out of Mexico, that don't come to the United States that often, that they have an opportunity to see it. I think it's good for business, good for their uh, their fans out there. To be able to, especially the Oakland Raiders, they're getting to see one of the best teams in the league. I think it's awesome for them, um, and it's good for the NFL, obviously, to keep up the brand over there. So I, I like it. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Gruden is certainly looking forward to it. He keeps he, he won't <laughs> shut up about it. Um, he's, just, he's happy to get out of the house. 
and you know what? Mexico City is going to get a great game, probably. Yeah. I mean, seeing uh, oh. seeing the Raiders' offense going up against the Texans' defense, uh, London's pretty jealous yeah. right now. They're like, why can't you guys give us a fucking good game like that? Uh, it's going to be a great fucking game, man. Uh, why don't you give us a tie? <laughs> yeah, fucking tie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Derek Carr, I uh, I think they're going to defeat Texans. I know you do as well. Cause we I just went over our picks. Um, Raiders are just hot right now, man. They're just fucking hot, and uh, it's going to be yeah. great. And uh, I think the fan base there is going to be amazing. It's going to be interesting, and I uh, I'll be at work, but I'm going to tune in. I'm going to tune in and um, I'll probably fuck no, up. No, I work. won't be at work, and I will be watching the whole game. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be awesome. So, yeah, good for the NFL, good for the fans, good all around. Um, all right, so that does it for that. And uh, coming up next is our second half of our show. Uh, Sean's going to yeah. lead us with some topics that we still have yet to discuss, and uh, we'll like see you in the second that. half. All right. All right, guys, welcome back to the second half. Well, we're going to get started with the number one overall pick, Jared Goff. Josh, I think Jeff Fisher heard you last week when you made that shout-out to him that he needed to play Jared Goff. Of course he did. He heard you. He heard you. Of course. Now, what are the expectations? He's playing the Miami Dolphins, one of the hottest teams, which I know you did pick the Rams to win. So let me let me hear what you got to say, Josh. All right, here's, so here's, going on. here's what's the deal with uh, Jared Goff. Now, as I stated earlier in the show, Jared Goff did look like shit during preseason, and yeah. especially in front of the cameras on Hard Knocks, it seemed like he was an idiot and didn't really know what he was doing, and he was just very, being very nonchalant. Yep. But he's had 10 weeks to um, get his shit together, learn the entire system, and uh, and then seeing somebody else starting week to week to week to week. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, somebody who I'm pretty sure he feels um, is inferior to him. So I think he's I think he's got the playbook down. I think he's got the, the fire lit under his ass. I think he's got everything that he needs to finally step in and be the number one overall pick and get into that role. Now, maybe he doesn't look all that great, but I think he'll be fine against the Dolphins. And I think he's going to win against Dolphins in his debut. He's going to win his debut. That's it's a bold statement, Josh. Fuck yeah. Very bold. Um, too bad you're going to be wrong. <laughs> I, I just don't see it, man. I, I do I do agree with you. It's going to be interesting to see how he responds to that adversity of being benched, um, per se, not started right off the bat like typically number one overall picks are nowadays. I'm a little shocked. I don't mind what Jeff Fisher did even though he was questioned. He wanted to make sure the rookie's ready. He knew the playbook. He can handle snaps under the center. Um, but I just don't see it looking good for him. I think he's going to throw three picks this game, and I think that that I think he'll get better. But I, I want to see it before I can believe it. So it, it's going to be interesting. I know you think that the Rams are going to win, but I think you're wrong. Actually, I know you're wrong because you're an idiot, Josh. Jeff Fisher doesn't but, think I'm wrong. What? Jeff Fisher doesn't think I'm wrong. He listened to me. Well, that's true, but Jeff Fresher probably won't have a job after this year, so what does that have to say? I don't know. He's got a cool mustache. <laughs> that's a different topic. <laughs> let's not – Let's not. we could jump into that. But no, actually, Josh, uh, let's get jump to our next topic. And and this topic was actually very shocking to me. I'm not sure about you, but Christine Michael, he was, he was waived. Mm-hmm. He's gone. The leading rusher for the Seattle Seahawks um, is gone. And um, – Shocking and surprising. The Packers picked him up. Green Bay having no depth at running back, which we talked about. What's going on? Do you think it's the right move? Do you uh, think so he's going to do good I, in Green Bay? I don't know why he was cut again by the Seahawks. He he looked great with the, for them. I mean, they fucking boosted his ass throughout the preseason. They were like, oh, Chris and Michael looks great. And then when he, when he played, he did look pretty good, you know? And uh, I don't know. Maybe they just don't like his name, Christine. You know, like, I don't know. It kind of has like a, a vampire name going on there. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know why they cut him, <laughs> especially considering their uh, injury concern at running back uh, with their own team. 
yeah. they let him go, and their trash is going to be uh, not that he's trash, but uh, it's going to be Green Bay's, um, you know, possible gold for the rest of the season. I yeah. mean. Uh, maybe this is where they finally get some consistency in the running game. Kristen Michael, he's very happy to be in Green Bay. I mean, why not? And uh, so I think he's going to do good. I mean, they need something going on in that running game. And Kristen yeah. Michael, I think, is a better running back than James Starks. I, I never liked James Starks. This year. This year. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like you said, I'm shocked. Uh, I don't understand why he was cut either. Um they boot like you said. They boosted him. They praised him. They're like, "Oh, he's coming with a different attitude. He's doing this right. He's doing that right." And he came in, and Thomas Rawls got hurt, and he just took over that leading role. And he did really good. Now this is the only downfall. He didn't have a lot of touchdowns. Um, surprising through ten weeks, he didn't have that many. And maybe that's why uh, CJ, per- uh, what's his name? Uh, Pro size. Pro size. There we go. Yeah. Uh, my mind just went blank. He did really good this past game, and. Maybe it was just all hype. Maybe Seattle was just trying to boost them up just to make themselves uh, make the media get off their backs, right? Maybe it was all hype, but he did really good. Um, but I think he found a team that really needs him, and he went to a great situation. I'm a little nervous to see what they'll do, how he'll perform there, but I think he'll be fine. He went to he went to a team that needs him, and that's the most important thing. You went to a team that has a great quarterback, great, good receivers. They just need a running back that's consistent downhill runner. James Starks tries to bounce it out too much, and I don't like that about him. So. What if they sign him and cut him within a week like they did uh, Niles Davis? <laughs> you, know, you got me on that one. I'm stumped. Uh, I, that would be fucked up, they, man. They shocked me on that. Well, no, I don't think so, man, because uh, <sighs> Green Bay did that because when they cut him, they just didn't ha- they didn't have to give the draft pick up because un- it was conditional, only yeah. if he made the roster for the rest of the year or something like that. So – yeah, they did that so they didn't have to give up that draft pick. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm shocked about that. Now, kind of jump into one of the the biggest figures in UFC right now. Biggest personality, biggest shit talker probably in a very long time. And 90% of the time he backs it up. Conor McGregor. He came off a big win. Um, he showed out, knocked that motherfucker out, and... He looked impressive, and again, he challenged Money Floyd Money Mayweather, Mayweather, <laughs> or whatever his nickname is. I fucked that up. I know I did, but uh, Floyd Mayweather, he's challenged him. Yeah, I don't know, Josh. What, what do you What do you think about that? It's, uh, uh, it's Floyd topic. Mayweather. Uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather is a great businessman. That's something Conor McGregor has uh, admitted to. Um, but uh, Conor McGregor is a fucking beast, man, and he don't give a fuck about anyone Psycho. or anything. He just wants to fight and get paid for it. He's mm-hmm. even he he calls out uh, Mayweather, and uh, he even says, "I'll fight on your terms because I know you won't fight on my terms because I'll kick your fucking ass any day of the week." I'm a real fighter, he says to Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. I'm a real fighter. I could do it all, but I'll, I'll even fight on your fucking terms. I'll fight. On boxing with boxing rules, but I, he's like, go talk to your boys at Showtime. I want a one hundred million dollar contract, and I'll fight on your terms. That's how confident I am that I'll kick your ass. And you know what, man? He just might because Conor yeah. McGregor is somebody I wouldn't want to fuck with. And uh, Floyd Mayweather, he, Psycho, he should do it. I think he should do it. And yeah. uh, the last time this was this challenge was issued, people were like, oh, this is ridiculous. This is this is funny. This is fun. Yeah. Uh, now, maybe it might happen. Floyd, yeah. May- Floyd Mayweather should, I think, accept Conor McGregor's. Uh, if he's saying, "Hey, I'll fight on your terms," where you are undefeated and one of the greatest of all time at boxing, I'll fight in a boxing ring with boxing rules yeah. for a hundred million dollars. He May Mayweather, man, he's box yeah. office gold. He should do it. As a fan, I want to see that so bad. I, I don't like Mayweather. I'll pay seventy five dollars to pay to see that. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> I would love to see it, man. I'd love to see McGregor <laughs> go at it, man. He's he he sh- talks so much shit, but he backs it up, man. And you know he, what? He, It'll be a better fight than Pacquiao Mayweather. I'll tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I I really I'll see. A, McGregor goes in there with all his emotions, man, and it's fucking awesome, and. 
even if you don't like the guy, you fucking enjoy watching him, right? He's entertaining so as shit. It, it's entertaining, and I, I'd love to see it, man. Um, as a fan, yes. I don't think May- Mayweather will do it. I, I think he's like, why would he take the chance of tarnishing his image? He's He doesn't have really anything to prove, right? So if he's smart, I don't think he will, just because he doesn't want to tarnish that image of his. Because I think he would lose, and I think he's afraid that he will lose. So I want to see it so bad. Oh, God, fingers crossed. Oh man, I I'm I'm not much into the UFC or boxing or fighting that much anymore, um, but I would totally I would pay for the pay per view just by myself. I don't give a shit, mm-hmm. and I will watch that shit. Like I don't care. Hell yeah, it would be awesome. It would be fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. But I don't know. I don't think it's gonna happen. But we'll see. Um, now Josh, this is something that hits home for you. This next topic, mm-hmm. and I'm probably gonna let you talk about it more than uh, than me. But Tim Duncan, your Spurs, your Spurs boy, one of the greatest power forwards of all time. I hate saying that because I'm a Mavericks fan, but I gotta show respect. He's gonna have his jersey retired, number 21, on December 18th. Mm-hmm. Josh, t- tell me. What's your favorite Duncan memory, man? I know you probably have like a hundred of them. Oh, yeah. I got plenty of them. But first off, you said one of the greatest. He's the greatest. Okay? Okay? <laughs> My bad. Okay. All right. So what? what's one of uh, my favorite Duncan memories? Oh, Jesus. Uh, beating the Mavericks, winning championships. Uh, let's see. I'll tell you exactly what my favorite dumb Dun- Tim Duncan moment was. It was before Tim Duncan ever even put on a Spurs uniform. Uh, when I was a kid, I used mm-hmm. to play uh, inner city league basketball, and uh, my team won the championship. And as a prize, uh, my team was going to go to a Spurs game. And I remember like it was yesterday. So uh, our head coach... He takes us to a Spurs game. It was Spurs versus the Phoenix Suns, and I was very excited to see it because Jason Kidd was playing for the Phoenix Suns at the time, and I couldn't oh. wait to see Jason Kidd. I was, it was, it was ugh, man, I couldn't wait. I was so excited. Jason Kidd back then, man, that's a that was exciting. So we go to the Alamo Dome, and uh, my head coach at the time he was uh, he used to play basketball. In uh, high school, uh, in college, and he knew a lot of the uh, of he knew a lot of scouts and agents in the NBA, and uh, he told us that uh, he had a big treat for us that night, and we're like, hmm, we didn't really know what he meant by that. Uh, so we go to the game, and it hits halftime, and the coach says, "Okay, everybody, let's go. Come on, I need I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you guys to somebody." So we start walking around. And, uh, and he introduces us to one of his friends who uh, happens to be um, Tim Duncan's agent. And there's Tim Duncan, big-ass Tim Duncan. He's just standing there, <laughs> so tall. I'm a kid, and he uh, he was a giant. And he just looked so shy and just, you know, and bug-eyed. He just, like, he just looked, like, he looked like a kid himself, but, like, you know, he's seven feet tall. And, uh, and... <laughs> So my head coach goes, hey, what's going on, man? Blah, blah, blah. And he goes, hey, guys, you want to meet Tim Duncan? Uh, and uh, he's probably going to play for the Spurs. That's why he's here. He's he's here to check out. He's, he's, he's checking out all the teams that have a possibility of drafting him. He was going from San Antonio to Boston and, and so on. Um, so uh, so he's, like, he's probably going to play for the San Antonio Spurs. You guys want to meet him? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got to meet Tim Duncan and shook his hand and everything. And he was such a nice guy and everything. Uh, he was awesome. He was great, and he ended up being the number one overall pick for the San Antonio Spurs. And uh, yeah, wow. so that's my favorite Duncan moment. You know, I you never even told me that story, mm-hmm. and uh, that's that's awesome, dude. That's actually pretty. That's pretty awesome, especially as a fan of the Spurs, mm-hmm. getting to meet the best power forward. Make sure I said that right. Yeah. Uh, of all time, <clears throat> before he even became the greatest. That's that's awesome, dude. That's a uh, that's something you you'll always remember every detail, dude. Um, I'm a Mavs fan, so my favorite part was him retiring. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know no, you're gonna miss Duncan and Dirk. 
I mean, we would to go. We would. We would we've been to plenty of games of Duncan and Dirk in the regular season playoffs. Playoffs. We had some of the greatest playoff series of uh, being between Dallas uh, and and Spurs. Uh, it sucks. Duncan was a, was a great player. Um, he played great for a long time. Uh, it it sucked that you know y'all lost that one NBA Finals and y'all should have won it against the Heat, but y'all came back and won it the next year. And honestly, like it, it was just awesome to see a great player like that because I was, you know, there's so many great players we hear about Bird and Johnson, Magic Johnson, all those guys, and I didn't really get to watch them, you know, yeah. and I got to watch one of the best players. And that's that's just the greatest memory right there, just to say that and be confident in saying like he is the greatest because he's nobody can really argue that, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's awesome, man. You know that's awesome, especially for you with that memory. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's de- definitely great that he's getting his number retired. Uh, he deserve definitely deserves it, especially only in, and it's not even having even been a year since he's been retired. So that's how much respect the the franchise has for him. Um, but going to other awards and jumping to baseball. Um, I know you definitely want to talk about this. I think there's one hot topic that you want to talk about, but there's a lot of MLB awards that were announced today, and um, you're looking at me crazy, so I'm a little nervous right now. But I'm I'm gonna read off these different choices here, Josh. I'm gonna start out with the MVP awards. Mike Trout winning for the American League, mm-hmm. and of course your Chris Bryant winning it for the N- NL yep. National League MVP. Yep. What do you think about that? Uh, dead on. That was dead on. Chris Bryant is the MVP of the National League. Not sure about Chris Bryant. Uh, 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 shit, fuck I, you. Uh, Mike Trout, <laughs> absolutely stud uh, yeah. for the Angels, and uh, yeah, dead on. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little shit for Chris Bryant. I just wanted to see your, your reaction a little bit. Uh, not much to talk about there, uh, hands down, greatest. And two young stars that we're going to see a long, for a long-ass time, so – I can see them winning multiple MVPs, so I'm excited to see that in the future. Um, moving on to the Cy Young Awards, the Americans, American League Cy Young goes to the Red Sox, Rick Porcello. Porcello. And then National League Cy Young goes to the Nationals, Mac Max. Schwarzer. God, I can't talk today. Schwarzer. I can't even say that right. Mm-hmm. Both of them got the Cy Young. Um, I agree with both. What mm-hmm. do you think? Um Let's 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 just keep let's let's read off then and then I'll tell you uh, exactly what I think. Let's keep uh, let's go on to uh, managers. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Manager of the year, American League goes to Terry Francona, uh, obviously, and then Dave Roberts for the Dodgers wins it, beating out Joe Madden and. Yep. Uh, that's what, that's why I wanted to say that one for last because I knew you might have a lot to talk about on this one. So I'll let you go ahead and – you know, let me finish the rookies. Hold on. Uh, American League rookies goes to the Detroit Tigers, Michael Fulmer. And National League goes to Corey Seager. So I'm going to let you go ahead and take over because I know you have a lot to say about the manager, uh, manager of the year award. All right. First off, okay, so the Cy Young – Lester and uh, Hendricks were in contention for the Cy Young Award for the uh, National League. And yeah. it goes to the Nationals' Max, Schwar- Max Schwarzer. And I – and let me tell you, a lot of Cubs fans are very upset. You know, I mean, when you have two Cubs pitchers in mm-hmm. the running for Cy Young and they both lose. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Max Roger was definitely better, the better pitcher this year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in almost every category, I mean, he was just just a stud this year. And uh, I'm so happy we didn't get to play the Nationals in the playoffs. Uh, I was yeah. very happy. <laughs> I did not want to play Schwarzer. Um yeah. So, fuck yeah. And as far as manager of the year, Dave Roberts, the Dodgers manager, a team that we beat in the playoffs uh, won Manager of the Year, and I completely agree. I didn't think Joe Madden was going to win, and I think I didn't think he should win. Wow. Um, because, yeah, we won the playoffs, and a lot of Coats fans will say that, but playoffs are not in the picture as far as determining these awards. Wow. Dave Roberts did uh, – now, see, Joe Madden, 
he, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. The Cubs were the best team in baseball pretty much from the start of the season to just a couple weeks ago and winning the World Series. They were the number one team from gate to gate. Best team. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. And Joe Madden had the best, t- you know, the best roster of in all of baseball. He had, I mean, he had all those great players. He, ha- I mean, he has two pitchers that were in contention for the Cy Young Award. I mean, he has the MVP on his roster. Uh, I mean, this guy had everything. They did exactly what they were supposed to do, and that kind of goes against you when you're, you know, when you're up for a manager of the year or a coach of the year when you're in NFL or NBA. Although NBA is probably a little fucking different, but Dave Roberts, man. <laughs> The Dodgers had a great team. They had a great roster, and they got riddled with fucking injuries throughout the entire season. Dave Roberts, and somehow he got that team to the playoffs, and that has to count for something, and it did, obviously, because he won, and uh, I completely agree with that because Dave Roberts did did more with so little, got to the playoffs, and kind of gave the Cubs a scare there. Uh, trust me, they gave the Cubs a little bit of a scare there, and uh, they have a great young team. I mean, they're kind of like, like, like doing what the Cubs are doing. They're like they're building for this team is not built for just you know right now. They're built for the long yeah. haul, and they, I mean they got the rookie of the year, um, and uh, you know just kind of like the Cubs had you know Chris Bryant last year. This is a team yep. that's going to be you know something to deal with. It's going to be Cubs Dodgers. I could see that battling you know for years to come. And uh, so Dave Roberts winning over Jordan Madden, I completely agree with it. Wow, I'm a. Uh... I'm in shock. I thought you were going to argue, get mad and throw a tantrum and uh, punch a wall. I, I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. Oh, that, that one, might Josh. come soon. Uh, <laughs> this is the next I was, topic. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was shocked. Now, I thought Madden might have gotten it just because I, maybe I'm just used to basketball because of the fact that every oh, yeah, absolutely. The team always gets it right. But That's um, how it is, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You got a good point on that one. So I'm not going to really argue on that. Um, I was, really was hoping the the Rangers, uh, our manager, Bannister. Um, I thought he was gonna should have won. Uh, I know, obviously, the Indians were a big shock to everybody. They came out of nowhere, but so did the Rangers. Um, the Rangers are actually number one team in the American League. Um, they came out of nowhere. Nobody thought they would uh, lead and win the division or do anything that they've done. They had a lot of older players like Adrian Beltre. Oh, you Darvish is hurt. Uh, what are we going to do on that part? But we put it together. Jeff Bannister has been uh, a great manager, and I thought he, he could have been in the contention for that. Um, even though, like I said, Indians were a surprise too. They were, they were a shock. Oh, right? yeah, they were. Um, but is, is this funny? Maybe I'm a little biased because I'm a Rangers fan. But – it's all good, man. Um, I think we have a lot of exciting teams for next year. Uh, some rookies, mm-hmm. uh, MVPs. They're both young, like I said. I think Cubs having those two Cy Young Ward, uh, uh, two Cy Young pitchers, pretty much this year, um, Lester and um, Hendricks. Right? Mm-hmm. It's going to be awesome to see. I can't wait, man. Baseball. I haven't been this excited for baseball in a year, so I- I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, definitely. I'm, I'm glad we. Uh, that's pretty much that wraps it up for most of our sports topics. Uh, you know, I think we ended on a good note on that one. That was uh, you shocked me, Josh. I'm I'm really shocked. I, oh, I, I do that. Me. You never know what you're gonna get with me. Yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm speechless. But let's go ahead and move on, Josh. Let's uh, jump into the heroes and villains. And uh, I think you might have some interesting, uh, interesting ones this week. So I'm going to let you go first because this is going to be awesome. Villain. I am very, very pissed off right now. I just started. My first off, my villain is Netflix. That's my villain. Let me tell okay. you why. I just started a new show called it's always sunny in philadelphia everyone's been fucking telling me all oh, this and that's a great show blah 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 i'm like yeah i don't i i don't really like these actors uh i don't even know some of these actors uh but i gave it a try and i love it i love the show it's really good um i and netflix has announced that uh they're getting rid of that show they're getting rid of family guy 
They're getting rid of American Dad. Really? They're getting rid of a uh, tons of content. Shit. They're basically losing all their Fox deals, and uh, they're losing a lot of content. I watch Family Guy and American Dad all the time. I uh, I probably enjoy American oh. Dad a little bit more than Family Guy, which is crazy because uh, everyone loves Family Guy. But Netflix is losing a lot of content soon. Uh, going into I didn't know that. Going into January 2017, and I'm really pissed off because most of what I watch every single day, what I have on the background, what eases me to sleep because I have to sleep with noise and stuff, uh, is going away. And uh, what am I paying for now? Like, why, why couldn't you just renew these deals Netflix everybody wow. watches Family Guy everybody watches It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia good thing yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to finish the entire series before uh, December comes but uh, December 18th it's going to be gone and fuck wow. you Netflix I mean damn take away all my content I'm, you're going to lose you're going to lose me as a customer although I don't know they do have some pretty good original stuff but you're <laughs> a lot of what I watch you for is going away and I'm not – so I got to make a decision. Is their original content really worth paying nine ninety nine a month? I don't know. I'm going to make that decision. But Netflix, fuck you. Wow. Um, I didn't even know all that honestly either. Um, it's wow. tragic. It's a tragedy. It is. They're – damn, really? Family Guy? Yeah. I'm shocked about that because Family Guy's is huge. Um, interesting. Um, my villain is actually a little closer to home in a sense of, uh, my villain of the week is Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones? Jerry Jones. Cause he needs to just shut the fuck up. All right. So oh! Romo came out and did that, you know, whole speech and everything like that. And, and pretty much trying to put the controversy to rest. And then he comes out and says, oh no, we're not going to give up on Romo. Uh, I'll make uh, you know maybe I'll make him the highest paid backup and quit just stop just say no we're focused on this year we're focused on Dak we're focused <laughs> on the game stop throwing stuff into the fire now that's what they're talking about now that's oh well what's what they're gonna do what are the Dallas gonna do you're creating a distraction like I love you Jerry Jones and, and you're you're but you're creating a distraction for the team Romo just did this whole long speech which was phenomenal and you just added. A different side of the coin now, and and you do what Romo did, do what the coaches are doing, do what the players are doing. Say we're all, we're focusing on this year. We're going to see how this plays out. We have a great chemistry. We have a great everything going. Shut up! That's all I say. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Shut up, Jerry. But Jones. that kind of leads into my hero, Josh. Um, my hero is Romo for what Sorry, he did. Romo. Yeah, it is, man. Um, he's getting a lot of respect around the league, and he deserves it. Uh, how he's handled the situation, he hasn't caused a stir in the media. Um, he came out and read that speech. I know he wrote it out, and Stephen A. Smith is a piece of shit, and he just wants to criticize everything that Dallas does. And he criticized, well, why do you have to write it out? Because it's emotional. you got to write it out. If you try to go up there and wing it, you're not going to sound right. So – he wrote it out. Exactly what he said was right on the point, man. He, he still said he wants to play, and he still has that drive, which is good for the team because that's going to push Dak Prescott. And he's a true professional, and it's happened. He did this to Drew Bledsoe, and he understands this is part of the game, and he handled it professionally, and I think he's going to be a great mentor to Dak like he's already been. You saw him smiling when you saw Dak throw that touchdown to Dez last week. You saw him just smiling on the sideline, happy. And I love that as a player, and I show him a lot of respect. So that's my hero. Uh, I just want to jump into that since I already kind of mentioned about that situation. <sighs> Who's your hero, Josh? My hero. Hmm. <laughs> who is my hero of the week? I'm stalling because I don't know who I'm going to go with. Um, I think. Oh, Lord. Uh Hmm. You know, we're, no, we're on. Okay, I know who my I know I know who my hero is going to be. All right, who is it? Myself. <laughs> what? Yourself? Yes. All right. What's the reason, Josh? Okay, so the reason why I'm my own hero this week. <laughs> 
has been one of the worst weeks at my job. It was so busy. I had so many things happening. And I handled it like a beast. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty proud of myself. I uh, I did everything that I had to uh, had to do. And I did it. I don't know how I got it done, but I got it done. Uh, I'm sitting here wondering how I made it through the week um, without uh, killing somebody. But uh, here I am. And, uh, and you know what? We're getting towards the end of the year, and I'm looking at you know things that I've done this past year. I went to a lot of places. I went. I did a lot of things, and there's still uh, things I'm going to go do before the year ends, like us going to uh, Kansas City. And so I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, I'm proud of you, Josh. Yeah, yeah. I really could have killed somebody. You, sh- really you should give could've. yourself a pat on the back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Give yourself so, a pat on the back. Just, just a couple pats. Yeah. <laughs> see what next week brings. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully you don't kill anybody. Um, <laughs> well, now, Josh, your week's over. Um, before we get into football Sunday, what's what's your week in life? What you got going on? Non-sports stuff. What's going on? Uh, I'm going to be watching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And, okay. and to all my wrestling fans out there, Survivor Series is happening this week. I'm going to be watching Survivor Series Sunday. Uh, it's going to be uh, Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is going to probably kill Goldberg for real in the ring because yeah. Goldberg's so damn old. Um, you got <laughs> Kevin Owens, which is Team Raw, going up against AJ Styles, Team SmackDown, Champion versus Champion. They both got great teams. I'm all in on SmackDown. SmackDown's going to win all the Survivor Series matches. Um, so that's what I'll be watching. It's always Sunday in Philadelphia and Survivor Series on Sunday. Well, you got a pretty busy weekend. That Sunday, you got football Sunday. Interesting. Well, I have a little bit of different weekend set up. Um, I'm actually going to be playing golf. I haven't mm-hmm. played golf in a little bit. I have a friend coming into town. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to be going to play golf, catch up. Uh, that's going to be pretty exciting. And obviously getting ready for Thanksgiving, man. Um, I'm actually going to be coming down there. We're going to be uh, doing our first video together in the same location, not three hours apart. And it's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to watch the football, have some great food, um, drink some beer. <laughs> and it's going to be awesome. I- I'm honest, I'm just getting ready for that. I'm excited, pumped. Uh, I'm ready for a vacation because I actually have – Next week, I have Tuesday, Wednesday off. I took those vacation days. Then I have, obviously, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off. So mm-hmm. pretty much I have a whole week, and I'm pumped. Oh, God, I can't wait. I totally, even though I just went on vacation and we went to Tampa, I could use a, to- a whole new vacation, so I'm excited. I still haven't recovered I'm, from Tampa. Oh, God. I, 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 just, I just haven't I haven't got out, got that stench out of my mouth from that piece of shit hotel yeah but uh i don't want to talk about it (laughs) uh all right josh let's uh who's your shout out this week though my shout out uh i was kind of torn between two different things uh one is a company and another is a city i think i'll save the city for next week maybe i don't know but uh i want to talk to hulu hulu I already said Netflix was terrible and what they're doing. So I want to give a shout out to Hulu. I'm going to try them out this weekend. Uh, it's also another thing. Uh, one of the things I'm going to probably do okay. is uh, I see that they have The Simpsons. They have The Office, which is a show that I love. Uh, they have Seinfeld. Oh, my God. So I'm going to check out uh, Hulu and uh, and see what they're about and... Maybe jump from Netflix to Hulu. I don't know. Or do both. That's what I do. <laughs> I don't know. I have both. Um, Hulu's great, Josh. Uh, that's uh, If you're going to try them out, what's awesome about them is they have shows that are still – that literally aired like yesterday. They'll have their episodes up the next day. Uh, they won't keep the whole season, the most current season up there, but they'll have them like the next day. So that's awesome. I love that part because I don't have cable. I just use Hulu, Netflix, and uh, online stuff. So – uh, I think you'll like it. Um, my shout-out of the week 
is yeah. it's also a tough one because they're it's it's a team of mine. They're not winning right now, but there is a player on that team that's doing phenomenal, and that's Harrison Barnes. Yes, I know the Mavs are doing horrible. They're shitty, mm-hmm. and I'm a little disappointed. But the bright spot of the team is Harrison Barnes. He, if anybody knows basketball, they know the Mavs always miss out on free agents. That's our. That's what we do. Apparently, every year we missed out on so many big time free agents, and finally we got one. And everybody was like, "Oh, I don't know. I don't know what his potential can be." But he's done phenomenal. He's already had like career highs multiple times this year. He's he's doing really good, and he's young. He's still so young, and I'm ex- so excited. Even if we're not winning right now, we have a good nucleus. We have a, a great player we could build around. And if Dirk can just give us a couple more years, maybe one, at least one more year, man, I'm excited um, for the future for Dallas. And I'm, I'm giving a shout-out to Harrison Barnes for – uh, living up to his expectations and living up to that contract because we gave him a pretty good contract. So yeah. I'm excited. So, and that is, that was it. That was a That's it good uh, for this week. Um, please, as always, if you like this episode, yeah. you enjoyed us talking about this week's topics, like, share, comment, subscribe, uh, annoy your friends with this. Tell me you have to watch this. It's the greatest awesome. thing ever, especially this yep. guy, Josh. He really knows what he's talking about. My God. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Like, See you all next week. Next week's Thanksgiving, Josh. You ready for all the food? I'm ready for next week. Next week's Thanksgiving. We're going to be recording uh, together, side by side. Not me here, you there. He's actually going to be here and... Uh, That'll be a little bit different. So I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna bring my flag. It's gonna cover up all those banners. Fuck so. that. But <laughs> next week, me and Sean together all right. live. All right. See you next week. Later.